What's going on, everybody? I am so excited. Welcome to another fun, special episode of the Make Money and Have Fun show. This week, we got our Christmas special going on. If you couldn't tell by the awesome intro and by the super cool Christmas background that we got going on, you can definitely tell by the eggnog that I'm drinking right now. No, it is not spiked. It's just regular eggnog. Okay, I like eggnog. I think it tastes good. So I'm going to drink some during today's show. Now, on that note, I got a really cool guy coming on here. He's a good friend of mine. We actually met through Facebook, which I'm starting to realize is a theme of mine. I'm, I'm meeting so many people on on social media, on Facebook, which is my, my biggest social media that I'm on, which is where we're streaming live right now, as well as on YouTube. And we're going to go to a whole bunch of other places after this show is over. We're going to go on podcasts and on TV and all kinds of cool places. But my friend, Jean, Sean Zeme. Here's actually the funny thing. I've been on Sean's show twice. I think over like the past two or three years it's been. It was actually the first time I was on a show was a couple of years back. And then the second time I was on a show was probably about six or nine months ago. And he does a really cool web show and, and kind of was some of the inspiration of this web show. But, you know, with my web show, I got I to gotta step it up a little bit. I got to do everything a little bit bigger, a little bit better, including my fun new intro video. Check this out. My motto in life is make money and have fun. I'm on a mission to show everyone how to make money yeah, and have fun. I'm all about making money and having fun. Uh, you can't see me rocking out in the background, but I was dancing that whole time. So I got the new Make Money, Have Fun theme song coming on here. But now, on that note, without any further ado, let me introduce you to today's guest. So Sean Zeme has been involved in business development since 2002, which I think I was about eight years old <laughs> back in 2002 when he was writing mortgages. Over the years, he's been using his ability to connect people to help develop his insurance business, which in my opinion is a genius idea. He found that if he introduced a professional to another through collaboration, it would allow more relationships to develop, which in turn would increase recommendations. This is part of the reason why Sean Zeme calls himself the connection machine. And the beauty of the recommendation is that it's putting both parties' name and reputation on the line, which causes each to work even harder to make sure the client has an extremely happy experience. Sean specializes in helping people obtain P and, and C insurance, as well as helping with connections. And he also helps professionals build a personal brand, which generates leads for their business. Now, without any further ado, let's hear it from Mr. Sean Z. What's up, man? Fred? How you doing, my man? Dude, what is going on, man? I'm super, I'm super pumped up to have you here. This is gonna be such a fun show. <laughs> dude, I am super excited. And yes, I have my show. It's been going on for a while, but dude, that intro was badass, man. I not bad, right? Clap it up on that intro because that is awesome. It's like a TV show. That's what it this is all it's all about, right? Having fun, mm -hmm. educating people, giving value, and people trust and learn about you while you're on a video. But people say, Oh, I don't want to do it because they don't like the way they look, the way they sound, et cetera. So now I appreciate you taking some time out of your day and allowing me to be with you today. This is awesome. Absolutely. And the eggnog is not spiked. I already asked them. It's not spiked. It's just eggnog, I swear. Oh, oh I got here. Here's the empty bottle. And I got, I got no, no other bottles here. <laughs> I wonder if we have to pay for that promotion now for, for both of that. I'm probably going to get like a $50,000 bill in the mail. You're like, oh, that's from uh, what shop right? Bolt, no, bolt, yeah, yeah. stop Acme, shop. one of them, yeah, Acme shop right, one of those, maybe giant. I don't know. I go to all <laughs> the different markets, but dude, it's, it's so funny that uh, that you bring that up about the show. I mean, the, the funny thing for me is I've always considered myself like a natural born speaker in a sense, it's just easy for me, it's just fun. It's just, I just, you know, you wake me up from a, from a drunken eggnog stupor. 
and I can speak about whatever, you know, and, and for a lot of people, that's not always the case, like you say, but the difference that it makes when you, when you essentially force yourself to do those kinds of things can be exponential. So I, I want to, there, there's so many things that, that we can, so many different directions we can go here, but I want to ask you the question that I always ask all of my guests on this show, Sean, and, and you're free to answer this however you like. Although I do want to remind you that we have a time limit. <laughs> uh, but what is your story, Sean? Well, I am. It's funny. A lot of people, they, they ask, what do you do? They're always asking, what do I do? And, and I do a lot of things. I'm, I'm a full-time phys physical educator. I work in Patterson. I've been teaching for 19 years. And on top of that, I have my businesses. And I'm all about helping others motivating others and inspiring others. So every single day, it's amazing for me because I never have, I try to keep it to the positive, to the exponential level, because I believe the more that positive that we that we are, the more the negativity can, you know, not, not be as so as bad as it can be. I've been through a lot. You know, I had, I've, if we could talk about a variety of things, my, I went through a divorce. Mm -hmm. I, I got remarried and I had a daughter that had a liver transplant. I had parents that had COVID, um, but I'm all about being positive, keeping moving forward. I love doing those motiv motivational quotes in the morning because it want I want to uplift others besides myself. I want to uplift others and start off their day on the right track. That's a, a yeah. an important thing for me. And no matter what goes on in business and sales, it can suck. But if you can really keep that mindset. And personally develop yourself as I have been reading and and getting myself to a different level. That's a lifelong journey you're always on. It's not like I personally develop for one year and that's it. You're always learning, and I love learning. Yeah, we used to say I used to be a martial arts instructor, and we used to tell our students that uh, motivation or personal development, as you call it, is like bathing. It's something that you need to do every single day. You know, a lot of people think they can do it once and then it's over. It's, you know, it's, it's the same thing with a, with a diet or, or whatever it is that you're trying to create. It's that consistency that makes it work. And you've created consistency with your own show. Tell, tell us about that. How did that kind of start and come to be? And, you know, what's it like? Well, before StreamYard, which I love StreamYard, yeah. uh, last year I was doing Facebook Lives. We were able to do Facebook Lives and bring people on like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And Zuckerberg got rid of it in November of last year. Really? I did about 54 of them. You could still do lives. I do lives all day long, right. but you can't bring somebody on. And I was like, dang. But I, what I enjoyed about bringing people together is the, the value, the authenticity that someone has when they share what's in their noggin. Because a lot of people are afraid to give those tips and tricks and strategies because they say, well, they're going to take my business. And I, I laugh because I, I can give you everything on a plate today and you're not going to close 100 percent. You're not going to gain all that kind of momentum, the market share that people worry about because people don't implement. They don't take action. So I am all about insurance and people say, what do you do? I'm an insurance, but I want to help others first. So I don't have to go on here and say, use me for insurance and I do auto and home and, and list everything I do. It doesn't matter. I can do insurance, but I can help you grow your business. So mm -hmm. I was asking others to share their stories, share some tips and tricks, share what their non-negotiables might be. And it allowed others to learn about them. It was me in the, in the spotlight as well, but I'm putting the guest on the pedestal. Yes. Like, Damn, I'm going to keep doing this more. So I did 54 last year. I did 104, 103 this year. And it's something that I really, truly enjoy. And yeah. I like StreamYard because it's like a TV show, man. It's like you can have the banners. You can have the, the streamer that goes on the bottom. You can have comments. Yeah. It's a phenomenal resource I found. It, it really is. I mean, it's it's funny because I, since I was 19 years old, I wanted to start a YouTube channel. But I'm like, I need a, a professional camera and a backdrop and lighting and, and a set. And I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I'm, I'm good at standing in front of the camera and speaking. You tell me to do that, I could do it all day long. You tell me to edit a video, I'd rather stab myself in the leg with a, with a, a you know, a hot knife. Yep. So it was like there was that barrier to entry for me where I needed to either hire somebody, which costs money, or I needed to to spend time and energy, which is another cost, to learn how to do all that stuff. 
And so when I started seeing all of these kind of, I guess, streaming services and, and video services pop up out of the woodwork, I was like, huh, I wonder if I can jump onto this. And and like you said, once once I shot the first episode of my show, I was like, oh, crap, I'm onto something and I can't stop it now. <laughs> and, it, and it was like that really good feeling where, where both people are edified. You know, I, I get to bring these people on that are edifying me and I'm edifying them by having them on the show. And I've had some big names on the show. I mean, Les Brown was on the oh, show, yeah. Alex Stern on it last week. I had uh, doc, uh, Sir John Chin, Dr. Obam Bone, a lot of really big names and big people. And I got even more coming into 2021. And it's just been so cool to to kind of get out there and, and make it happen. And I feel like it's kind of a, a really cool thing that, that you did with your business as well. I actually love your business model, by the way. I think that it's it's truly genius because in my opinion, the, the life insurance um, world is saturated with mm -hmm. life insurance agents out there. And so it's like, how do you differentiate yourself from everybody else? And I think that becoming the insurance doctor, that guy who takes a second look, you know, to, at your at your insurance policy to see if he can do any better. I think that's absolutely genius because it's like, how can I catch all of this overflow kind of coming in? Was that something that, that you kind of created because you wanted to or because or you felt like you needed to do it like out of necessity? In the uh, probably about... I would say about 10 years ago, I was the, on my business card was an insurance producer or an insurance broker. Right. And that was the same thing that you always see on people's business cards. And I don't even have business cards anymore. Like I don't even have business cards. Yeah. I have a digital business card, but I don't believe in that anymore. But I wanted something different. And if I can give you a second opinion, and this helps out with real estate agents and mortgage professionals, and they say, oh, I have to give out three cards. Hey, that's fine. I'll give out three cards as well when I have a listing and a buyer that is hot and I can give them over to you. And they're like, oh, just give them to me. I'm like, well, you want to give me three options? I'll give them three options. I'm all about having solid vetted professionals that I you know, hand off business to. Mm. But the second opinion, if you're a mortgage provider, you're doing refinances right now, you have the homeowner's declaration page. I will, with my team, shop it through 30 companies that we represent, see if the coverages, we can either meet or beat the coverages, and also possibly beat the premium. So they're saving on the refinance, they'll save on a homeowner policy, they look even better. So it's not even me, I'm helping you gain more market share, net market share because you're giving more value. You're not just a mortgage person. You're not just an insurance um, real estate agent. Yeah, you are a resource, and that's why I'm trying. I teach a lot of real estate agents and mortgage professionals. You don't want to be just one or the other. You are one that helps others. If they need an attorney, have a recommendation source. Oh, well, what happens if it goes south? Well, every once in a while, you might have a recommendation that doesn't work out the the right way. People don't always mesh. So yes, sure. it's going to happen every once in a while, but. It's not going to happen all the time. If it happens with me once, all right, you're, you're off my list and we're not doing business anymore. So to stay on my list, it's very simple. Be honest, be upfront, communicate with people, educate, and you're going to get all my clients. It's amazing how hard that is for some people, right? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so funny. I, I think that it's, it's cool because I've been tinkering with the idea of a liaison type business where I, I essentially play this middleman. Because what I realized is in the last three to five years for me, I've grown my, my network. My own circle is full of these high level players. And I'm like, I, I realized that people are calling me up and like, hey, connect me with, with da da da, connect me with whoever, this guy, that guy. And then I'm like, wait a minute, after I hang up the phone, I'm like, I should have charged them for that connection and, and mm -hmm. made some like, like a legitimate business out of it. So, it, you know, it's, it's it's so cool that, that you're kind of looking at you're looking at money in reverse, which is really the way that everybody should be looking at it, which is the fact that money is just a byproduct of value exchange. And you're you're looking at it as as how can I create this maximum value each day, which then in turn, you know, kind of trickles down the line into cash at the end of it to, to kind of fund the rest of your business. I mean, the piggyback off of that, a lot of real mortgage professional, for example, they, oh, I, I need to get business. Well, if you see a real estate agent on Facebook, put their listing up, share it to your wall, say, hey, 
if you're looking to buyers, you know, a property in this town, check this out. Maybe there's an open house and then say, hey, if you need a uh, mortgage, give me a shout. You're giving value. You're providing value. Mm -hmm. Well, do I have to ask them before I share it? I don't. I just share it because why would yeah. they be upset by getting more exposure? I've grown my Facebook to the maximum for your personal is 5,000. So I'm always deleting people. I'm, I'm at that point. I'm always purging. So I happy <laughs> birthday days every day, right? If I yeah. don't have any communication with that person in one year, and I'm not going to give you a happy birthday. I just hit delete. That's how mm. I, that's how I remove people. So that's smart. there's people that are not providing value consistently. We don't need to be doing business together. Oh, well, that's mean. No, it's not mean. I am using Facebook as a business. This is not just to talk about, do, do you see my family? Yes. I have a beautiful family. I have my daughters. I'm always sharing what I'm doing because I believe the more authentic that you are, People are going to know you're a human being. You're going to be trusted more because I'm not going to BS you to get a policy, to get into a, a, a business deal with you. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be honest and be straightforward. And that's how I roll with my life because that's how important it is to me to communicate, to be honest and upfront. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I love the, the little Facebook hacks that you threw in there. So, you know, the, the funny part, like I mentioned earlier, you and I have never met in person. Right. I know. <laughs> This is it's, like a, it's crazy. It's a lot of people I've done the same thing with. Yeah, it's amazing. It's how you network mm -hmm. in this world, and you can do more of these. Think about this. A lot of people like to go to networking functions, or they. I used to go meet up with coffee appointments. Well, you can do more of these in a day if you really wanted to really focus on it. If you drive to a Panera Bread, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks. What happens if the person bails on you last minute? Oh, I can't meet you. Well, on this case, someone bails. Okay, it's scratch it. And you call somebody else. You can have a video call and have a great opportunity to meet somebody and then draw value from it. And I always say meetings don't ever happen unless you selfied. I never selfied before. Three years ago, I started selfieing. And that's how you prove you're actually having those meetings. Otherwise, you never met. And like we we've never met in person, but I've known you. I, I follow what you're doing. It's something that it's how powerful social media is today. But yeah. That's how we're using it is the network. Others just use it to um, put negativity out there. Sure. They want to talk about things because everyone has these big muscles when they are in on the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely I got to jump in there talking about value. You know, the, the funny thing was I was seeing you always coming up on my Facebook feed. And I'm like, man, this guy's crushing it. He's making all these videos and he's providing value in a sense. You know, it's it, it may not be direct value where it's like he didn't put money in my pocket in a sense, but you're you're giving out good stuff. And and I looked at this a while ago on Facebook, like you were talking about Facebook purges. I looked at there's there's two types of, of people on Facebook that that are invaluable in a sense. The first is the people that are putting out toxic content, you know, mm -hmm. negative content, very um, one-sided content, very opinionated kind of content and things like that. And then the second people, in my opinion, are the people that aren't putting any content. And it's like, you're not, you're not giving me anything to, to, you know, be, be allowing you a friend slot on my Facebook, because like you said, it, it's capped at 5,000 people. And if I could put somebody in there, who's delivering something to me that that's a value and to my network that's a value, but I can't because this person in here who never posts is on there. That's essentially wasted value to me. And, and so I, I love looking at it that way. And, you know, I just, I saw enough of your videos and then finally you reached out to me and I was like, Ooh, he actually noticed me. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> it's, it's here's so another, cool. here's another hack. You know, every one of us has a phone and I'm watching us on our, we're on our live right now, right? That's funny. Everybody for one one moment. <laughs> it's fun to know, right? You can just set up your phone. A lot, a lot of people think you have to have a uh, tripod, a microphone. The phone today is better than any camera. If you really need something on a, on the fly, the camera in your phone is phenomenal. Set it up. Always have an intro, have a topic, and have a closing. So the intro always the same. The closing is always the same. The middle, that's where the, the magic happens. 
And every single one of you can do this. Mm. I have no time, which is crazy for when I, people say that to me, I mean, you, you're insane because I teach, I'm a department head, I'm a ment uh, mentor on um, the education side. I'm a union president, hmm. varsity, baseball pres um, varsity baseball coach. I'm married, I have three kids. One had a liver transplant. One was just born seven weeks ago, who is just thriving. Mm -hmm. So my house is crazy and I have time. And here's a, here's a really a major hack. You go in your basement, you take five different polos, five polos, you have five different topics. You set up your phone, you have the one topic, you think about it, you hit record, you rock out intro, talk about that topic, have a closing. What do you do next? Take off the polo, put another polo on, do the intro, the topic, and then the closing, do it five times. You, I can do five videos in 15 minutes. Those are your five for your week. You wanna do seven, uh, 21 minutes. You can't find 21 minutes to in your day to shoot value, to shoot you know, information that will help others. And it could be anything, guys. How to answer the phone. People don't answer the phone. How to have a voicemail. How to, you know, go to an, a networking function. I love this too, and I bring this up in a lot of my having. And if you're a real estate agent, if you're a mortgage professional, if you're an insurance broker, if you're a, a trade, read this book. Do videos about it. You're not talking about your business. You're talking about helping real estate agents grow their book of business. This is a blueprint, but agents don't read this book. Oh, I have no time. What are you crazy? Real estate agent, you can, you, it's the least amount of money to enter that business and they don't treat it as a business. They treat it as a job. That's why they get out. That's why there's not many doing really huge numbers because it takes some time because it's developing a business. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it it's there, there's there's certain phrases that people say that, that make me cringe and one of them is when people tell me i don't have time because it's so illogical to me it's like we we all have 24 hours okay now we have to fill that 24 hours up and it just becomes a question of what are you what are you filling that time with that could be replaced with this because really what they're what they're telling you sean if they're if they're saying you know i don't have time to shoot a video or whatever is that they don't prioritize that yes. that's not important to them enough and they and they don't see the the value in that and one of the things that I'm, i write about in my next book make money and have fun that's coming out in the spring is this idea of push versus pull and you'll love this by the way giving some some value away here push is is this idea this mentality or this feeling that we need to overcome something we need to grind and, and put our nose to the grindstone and, and push through this work to get to the result i don't subscribe to that i subscribe to pull to this idea where go to the things that are pulling you pull is always going to be stronger than push we can always pull more than, than we can push if you don't believe me take a yeah. gallon of milk right take a gallon of milk and hold it all the way out Right, and your arms gonna your arms gonna get tired almost right away. But now, if you hold it close to your chest, like a pulling motion close to you, you're gonna be able to hold it there a lot longer than you can if your arms fully extended. Right. So the idea is to find these things that are pulling you. And I would argue that if if someone is is resistant to making videos or whatever it is, and and this goes for everybody, it doesn't matter if if you know you don't like making videos or whatever. But if you're resistant to something. I'd like you to explore the idea that maybe that's not the right thing for you to do. You see, when, when, I, uh, when I was a martial arts instructor, I wrestled in high school, and I also trained jujitsu. And wrestling and, and jujitsu look very similar, but the biggest difference is the mentality. The mentality of jujitsu is if move A doesn't work, go to move B. If B doesn't work, go to C. If C doesn't work, go to D. The mentality in wrestling is if move A doesn't work, Keep doing move A, but do it harder until it does work. And you know, it's funny. Yeah, go ahead. I have, one of my best friends is a jujitsu. Uh, jiu um, he, he has an academy in Warwick, New York, okay. and he was a wrestler as well. Yeah. And the joke I always said is the difference between those two is one wears a onesie and one doesn't. One wears a gi, <laughs> one wears a onesie. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's you know it. what? I'm not really sure about that onesie one, but the gi is pretty damn cool. So, so if if anybody needs a big confident confidence boost, do what I did. Go to an all guys high school and join the wrestling team. Okay, nothing will intimidate you for the rest of your life if you do those things. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then when you leave high school, become a karate instructor and teach three and a half year old kids all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Sean, this is this is so much fun, man. I'm I'm so excited to have you here. I always feel like I feel like the people on these shows are in the room with me. It's like I feel like you're just like sitting across the the desk from me here, and we're just having a chat. But I always like to ask, what do you what do you like to do when you're not working, Sean? What what do you like to do for fun? Well, I used to golf a lot. Okay. I used to play golf, but it's tough now with my little the little girls. I have a two year old, and then I have the seven week old. I have a fourteen year old that uh, lives with her mother, but it's I'm all about being around family. I love being around family, enjoying that time. Um, I'm very big in fitness now. You know, I put my fitness on a back burner because of what we had to go through with my my middle child, my middle daughter with her liver transplant, I wasn't worried about my physical health and I gained some weight. And in April, I started doing some running and I started walking, running and doing all that jazz and I was gonna go back to the gym and then I don't have the time, right? People have no time. So I started and I got involved with Beachbody and I started doing these workouts that people say, oh, it's multi-level marketing. It's That's not even, they're a networking, network marketing company, but the whole gist of why I got involved was to get myself in shape. And instead of going to the gym and people go to the gym, you have to drive there to and from, you have to wait in line sometimes for machines or, or the weights or what have treadmills, et cetera. And you have to drive back. Well, now I, I have my laptop. I find out what I want to do. Oh, today I want to do a boxing workout, 10 rounds, phenomenal six week program. All, and it teaches you, I never boxed before. And I, I'm not, no, I can't go into the ring with Mike Tyson today, but right. it's something that it was fun. And I would show videos. I want to be I vulnerable with people and let them know, look, this is real. And some people are like, not, you know, knocking me. Oh, the form was off. I don't really care. I was trying something new. It was working as far as there's a lot of results. I've lost weight. I feel great. The mentality is there. I tell people in sales that are overweight. You got to be active, man. You got to get yourself in shape because it'll help your business as well. So fitness is huge. And it's I love being home. I can go and I love my wife allows, you know, some time. I listen, can I go and knock out an hour workout? And I figure out in the day. Sometimes it was in the morning. Sometimes like last night was later, you know, about 830 at night. So wherever I can find it, I get it in. Make sure I, I keep myself in check as far as my fitness and other things I like to do is, you know, you know, I used to be get family and get togethers mm -hmm. or have friends get togethers. Right. When this whole pandemic is over, like we're all about hosting parties. We're going to have yeah. parties like all the time because we haven't had anything in what, nine, nine months or something now. Um, so we know when the, things start to lighten up and we can get everyone can hang out. We're gonna have some major bashes because yeah, I be yeah. around people, you Am know. I invited? Oh hell yeah, man! Definitely. Nice. <laughs> I'll bring the eggnog. Hell yeah! <laughs> It'll be you know a phenomenal time if we can get back to that in the near future. I know it's gonna happen. It's happening. It's something. If you took this time, this last nine months instead of living in mis misery, you know, like oh, I have to be at home. I have to be around my family, my kids, what have you. You can be around them more often which is amazing for me. I was able to spend some time with my daughters who would have to be in daycare for eight to nine hours a day and you lose that time. So I was able to gain that time I would never have ever before. And I was able to develop other businesses. I was able to personally develop more. This is a great, yes, it was a lot of my, my parents went through COVID. So we had some really down times and then big uptime now like they're they uh have recovered they're doing phenomenal but it was a year this year we can't wait to get over i'm hoping 21 is going to be a heck of a lot better than 20 as um we went experienced it has sure. to be but yeah. but on the business side it blossomed my on my side and i am very fortunate of what all the people that wanted to work with me continue to work with me and 
I still get phone calls today. I'll have calls tomorrow. I'll answer the, the call. Then on, on Christmas Day, you're not going to, I'm not answering the phone. But, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just something that I believe, yes, you should answer your phone at any time. And if, oh, well, if I have my kids, what's that going to mean to the client? That you're a human being, that you're a parent. I think it's a good thing that someone knows you're a parent and that you're, you know, maybe you can't talk. You know, people say, oh, I can't talk right now. You have proof because your kid is yelling in the background, you know? Exactly. Exactly. It's it's so funny. I mean, bringing up this, this you know, the current state of affairs that are going on with, with COVID. When, when it first started, I was similar to kind of what you said at the end. I was, I was kind of angry about it. You know, I was, I was feeling this, I guess, kind of resentment and, and this, just this pain because I, I, I have a, uh, I have a notebook, right? And I wrote, I wrote out all my goals for the year in this notebook. And a lot of them included going to this seminar and that seminar and going to this meetup and that meetup. And obviously they all got canceled. And so it, it disrupted some of my plans. And the other thing that happened in that time was I started this show and I, I realized that there's something to be created in a virtual space. Now, a lot of people do it wrong, and that, that creates what's known as Zoom fatigue today, you know, where, where people are having these 12 hour summits and there's no engagement. Yeah. It's just, you know, we got 16 people here that are going to pontificate to you for the next 12 hours, and you got to sit at your computer and watch it. But when you when you create an experience and a, and a engagement filled environment online, stuff can work, and and it's really it's really cool seeing that all kind of manifest and, and come together for me because now I'm like I want to do everything virtual now at this point. Like like yeah, I'm definitely throwing a party like you as soon as we open back up, and uh, you know all that kind of stuff, and, and going to as many you know in person events as I can. But also, I, I found a new love and appreciation for the online side of things going on. Oh, by the way, Carrie's here. Carrie said hi. Hey, Carrie. She said, uh, so true to some of the stuff that we got going on. And she said she's here. We're glad to have you here, <laughs> Carrie. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for watching. I forgot to mention earlier, if you guys type in the comments below, we can bring your comments right up on screen, and you can come uh, you can come hang out with us. So, Sean, what are you doing for Christmas, man? <laughs> Uh, we're going to just lay low. We're going to have, you know, in-laws are going to come over. Uh, our, th our thing is you can come over if you're tested. You know, get tested. <laughs> yeah. You're negative because I have an Im immunosuppressed child. So Natalie has her liver transplant. Uh, she's been a year, um, was May 10th of, uh, she's been out since May 10th, 19. Um, so she's doing fant fantastic. That's awesome. But she can get sick. So we haven't, that's another thing, not having her go to daycare and having her pull from daycare probably in the beginning, probably February. So she was getting sick every couple of weeks and her get sick, we end up in the hospital. So not having that opportunity to have her around other kids, the last nine months has been phenomenal as far as her numbers, you know, are where they're supposed to be. And she's doing, she's very, healthy and that's where we're going to keep it that way but uh just you know we have our traditional we'll have some ham we'll have some macaroni and cheese and stuff like that have some coquito um that's a you know my my, my mother-in-law probably bring that over and no we're not even spanish but she has some friends that had some recipes and she creates it and, and it comes out pretty good that's the funny. um and otherwise just laying low we'll probably do some facetiming with my immediate family and resume calls, what have you. Sure. Well, that's what we're doing. What about you? So I, I chill on Christmas. I mean, I got my, my sister and, and uh, my brother in law are coming over and they have a they have a one year old daughter. So it, it's uh you know, it's gonna be fun for her. She's going through through Christmas here with us. So she's got all kinds of stuff coming, which is gonna be which is gonna be really cool. But you know, every year for, for Christmas, um, for, for us, I mean it ended like ten, eleven o'clock. Right. Like we, we never did the big dinners, the big uh, gatherings or anything like that on, on Christmas Day. So we actually ended up around, I don't know, for I guess the past 15 years or so, we go to the movies on Christmas. So it's, it's great. There's nobody there. Yeah. It's, it's generally not packed. And there's typically good movies out around that time of the year. So we might go see Wonder Woman or something like that and, and uh, you know, hang out at the movies because, you know, it's like, 
we realized that like after 10, 11 o'clock, like the novelty is, is up now. You know, you can't, you can't open more gifts. You can't listen to <laughs> more music. But what we did do is every year, except for this year, the Saturday after Christmas, we threw a big family get together, a Pollyanna party. And my mom is one of nine. So those get togethers are huge, especially now because a lot of the cousins are getting married and they're having kids and stuff like that. So it's, it's you know, 100, 150 people, uh, you know, hanging out at, at one of my two uncle's houses. They, they hosted, you know, they flip flop hosting it each year. And that would be like our big like get together for for Christmas time. It's always it's always the first Saturday after Christmas. And every I think every five years or so that falls on New Year's Eve which is actually yeah. even cooler. So then we get to see everybody. People live all across the country, Florida, California, Georgia, stuff like that, and they all fly in, and we just kind of throw a big party and, and have some fun. I mean, that's I love parties, and we used to do that Christmas. We usually have a Christmas Eve. We, um, My sister is, was born on Christmas Day. So oh, we wow. Always do like Christmas Eve with her, do like a little bir birthday thing. Christmas Day, we used to go my... Um, my wife Amanda's family we go to her um, her house, but we're always like moving. This and t this year, it's going to be more more light, you know. <laughs> go keep It'll so be. We, uh, we actually have a question here, Sean. So Robbie asked. He said, um, "Websites versus landing pages. What do entrepreneurs need most?" Is actually a really good way of wording it. I have my answer, but why don't you go first, Sean? It depends on how detailed you want to be. I think if you're using landing pages, it's all about lead generation. Um, mm -hmm. Lead generation is so key for every single business that you're in, no matter what type you're in. Yeah. I think a website um, can hold a little bit more to it. I have on mine a different um, parts to it. I have a mentoring piece. I have maybe I have my uh, my men my networking events. I have my location where I can have people go to. Um, it's all about education. My videos are all on the, uh, the website as well. But landing page is, I think, very key. And I think that the cheapest start for lead generation. And then yeah. as you start having more money coming in, I think building, you don't have to have a huge website, but it has to be ease of use, allow people to get, in my case, I have insurance. I have all my forms on there. So if you need an insurance quote for a home, you go to insurance quotes, you hit home, fill it out, goes right to my email, goes to my team. That's how I use, I use the website as more of like an assistant yeah. um, at this point now, There's but a no landing page problem. is a start. Everyone should have a landing page. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a key piece. Yeah. Robbie, it's uh, it's funny that you asked that. So I actually have a, a business branding package that I sell to clients. And so basically what, what I've done is, is I've looked at all of these different things. So there's websites, there's landing pages, there's logos, branding assets, you know, all this different kind of stuff that people need to, to really get their business off the ground. And through branding, mm -hmm. I've been able to close more sales, generate more leads and expand my reach and my marketing with it. So what I've done is I've kind of think of it almost like a business in a box type model where I've taken all of the pieces and put them together into this package, but it's funny. It's funny that you bring this up. So, um, to to answer the question directly, websites versus landing pages. I think Sean, you you hit the nail on the head with that one. To me, a website is like a billboard. It's mm -hmm. like a like a business card for you. It's it's essentially your social resume, if you will. It's a, it's an online resume of yourself, of your offerings, of your services, and things like that. But the idea is to take people off of your website and into your sales page or into your sales funnel, which would in, in turn be a landing page. So I think that, that a landing page is going to get you more conversions, whereas a website serves you better as a branding asset. Now, I, I obviously, you know, include them both inside of my, my business branding uh, package on there. And the really cool thing, it's so funny that you brought this up, is that I'm actually doing a giveaway. So this is typically a $5,000 package that I put together. It includes coaching, branding, it's, it's a done with you, done for you type experience. But I'm actually giving one away for free and I'm gonna give it away right on, on these shows. So starting next month, I'll have my first giveaway. I got a prize wheel and everything. But Robbie, um, text me right here. So text 215-596-1515. I'll send you the form to fill out. Once you fill out that form, you're entered into the giveaway and you can get the $5,000 program absolutely free if you win the 
the giveaway in next month's show. I saw that. That's an awesome giveaway. And for those that are entrepreneurs out there, and you don't have that, it's why not sign up? You know, you what's the chance you win it? Now you have all this accessible to you that it would cost five thousand bucks. Well, so go for it for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, it's really, it's really, you know, the, the five thousand it, dollars. It's kind of essentially almost what it would take to put it together yourself. But it's like, I, I thought of it like, what if what if I could go into Target and buy one box and inside of that box is everything that I need branding wise to, to start my business, to take it off the ground. Cause like the way that I did it, all the stuff that you see on my on my social media accounts and on my websites and on my landing pages and on my, my funnels and all that stuff, I, I had to go all over the place. I went here to get this and here to get that and here to get this and here to, and it's like, there's all these people that have one or the other. So I yep. said, what if I just brought it all together and, uh, you know, make it happen. But Sean, check this out. You're going to love this. I got to share my screen real quick. So I actually found a virtual, a virtual prize wheel, if you will. I got to remove you and put you here. So look at this thing. So it's a virtual prize wheel that people are going to be able to, to go through. So next month on the show, I'll, uh, I'll be using the virtual prize wheel on there. To get everything you can have done. it branded. That was pretty nice. Oh, it's so cool. You can customize everything on this show. When you spin it, it plays music, and you can select what music you want it to play. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of groups that are using those, and they give away. There's a lot of money to be made on those things. My wife's been on a couple of these, and she's won without even spending a lot of money either. And there's people that spend lots of money. It's like gambling. Um, and they have different things they give away. So... And the, and the more people that are on that wheel, it gets smaller, like little pieces. Mm -hmm. like yeah, I can, I can add up to 500 pieces on this wheel. So it's like if I wanted to add a coaching program in there, I could add that. Or if, or if I wanted to add the mastermind or whatever. And, you know, I can even bring guests on and have them add stuff. So 2021 is going to be such a cool year for the uh, for the Make Money and Have Fun show. But, Sean, you have a gift too, right? You're, you're giving away some, some Christmas spirit. What, what do you got for our fans, for all the people watching us? Yeah, I have my mentoring program. If those that are interested in getting involved with using video, which I teach everybody that signs up, uh, how I went about my video entourage in the last three years. I haven't been doing video that long, but I've done lots of video. I've done over 13 something right now, 1300 uh, videos that I've done. Then I share my tips and tricks and strategies. I have, it's a, uh, I've been doing a three month mentoring program. Some people go on for six months. Um, I usually charge, it's 375. Those that are on this show that want to get involved, um, that want to sign up before the end of the year, I will, and it's 375 a month. I will do it. What did I tell you? What did I say? I want to give out these crazy numbers, right? Yeah, I think, uh, what did you send me? One, 175? 175 must be crazy, but 175 a month, I will help you. Uh, develop your personal brand, which will generate your leads. And a lot of people say, well, how am I going to do that? I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks. And I have action items, but I want action takers. I want implementers. I don't want people that just show up. I mean, I can give you all the videos. And wh what is that going to do? I can share all the, I'm going to give you all the content. You're going to have so much content, you won't, you won't know what to do with. And you can go through the videos yourself and, and you know, see how it goes or we have our mentoring calls every week we have a half hour call we go over what you've done prior we go over some action items that you're going to do for the next week and i look and i have you tag me on certain things that you will post on different platforms so that we will in a slow methodical strategic way generate your personal brand i have a bunch of people that i have recommendations and i can give you some uh, referral videos that they've done for me that are some past students that I had that will definitely share what it has done for them. It's something that I know if you're not doing video and you're afraid of being in front of the camera, 2021, you might want to start. It's something no matter what business you're in, you should be interviewing people. You should be giving value, uh, going around town, interview all your establishments that you like going to, all the owners. Why would I do that? Because it's value. You're going to be the one that's not just talking about insurance in my case, but if you're a real estate agent, you're not gonna just talk about selling homes or buying homes. You're gonna talk about the resources in your town. Maybe there's a, 
maybe you're at by um, NJ Pack. You live in Newark, and you're gonna go in there and and do a little quick little intro. Maybe someone's never been there before. You share some value instead of just sitting here and oh, call me. I'm going to sell you. And that's all that kind of, and I'm going to close you. I don't need to close anybody. When someone calls me, I take the information. I want to help them. I take the information. I'm going to shop the hell out of it, find out the best coverage for a fair premium, and then present it to you. Do you want to take it? No. Okay. And then some people say, oh, I thought it'd be a little cheaper. Okay. I offer, I gave you my offer. This is the best I can do. And then these are the ones that say, oh, it's too expensive. Go somewhere else. Get screwed because they go online. They plug in. I tell people all the time, you're not going to do your own heart um, bypass surgery, yeah. right? You're going to have a professional do it. If you want to be that one, go for it. Go for it. I say, good, good luck. Go to anyone online you want to go to. You don't know what you're plugging in. And if you're plugging in, I'll give you an example. Auto insurance, if you go anywhere, minimum coverage in New Jersey it's 15,000 per person, 30,000 per accident, and 5,000 property damage. That's the minimum coverage. If you have an accident, you end up in the hospital or somebody ends up in the hospital, minimum of $50,000, minimum of $50,000. You have a $30,000 max on your insurance policy. Where's that money coming from? Your assets. They're gonna take your assets because you're going cheap on insurance. But that's what the automatic situation that you have when you go online, you're not going to understand to move that from a fifteen to a hundred thousand. You're not going to move that three thirty thousand to three hundred. And you're not going to move the property damage from five to a hundred thousand. You're not going to do it because you don't know that. I'm hoping that you're listening right now. So when you have a chance, if you have a policy that is that minimum coverage, you need to shop it today now because you are in a bad position. You're basically. I've had insurance policies. It says no insurance on it. It's called a pay policy. It's really a worthless piece of paper that you have, but you have insurance. It's something that you got to be real careful and hmm. do your due diligence, not just – and use professionals. Don't just try to do it yourself all the time. Absolutely. You know, I, you know, I, um, yeah. You try to do your own website. You could try, but go to a professional, and you'll have it done in a quicker time. Right. Frank, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's always the thing is that – half the time I feel like we're, we're in the business of selling convenience. You know, it's like, sure, you can do all of this stuff yourself. And, and, you know, I, I also, I've taught financial services for, for a long time, real estate investing and, and financial literacy and things like that. And people always ask me, Hey, can I, should I, you know, I learned X, Y, and Z about taxes. Should I just do my own taxes this year? And I say the same thing. I'm like, Hey, you know, when you break your leg, I'll come do your surgery for you. How's that sound? You know, and we can save money on our on our surgery bill. And it's like, you know, in the medical field, it makes perfect sense. But in the financial field or, or anywhere, people can't see it as, as easily anymore. But it's like, you know, you, you would never you would never diagnose your own illnesses. You know, you'd never, you know, ingest, you know, write your own prescriptions. You, you'd never, you know, do surgery on yourself. But yeah, I'll do my own taxes this year. And it's like, if you want your financial health to be as strong as your physical health, you need to hire the professionals. You need to bring the people in, you know, even if it's just a matter of convenience. It's like, yeah, I can make my own website. Yeah, I can make my own logo. But is that going to, to produce you the highest ROI in your business right now? Or is it easier to just give somebody a couple thousand bucks and be like, here you go, you you take care of it all and let me know when you're finished. Right. You know? Like you know, for, for me, I've spent over $50,000 on education just this year. And none of it was in a college or a university. Mm. It was all coaches, mentors, uh, seminars, webinars, books, you know, you, you name it, classes, courses, all of the above in there, because I recognize the value of it. You know, education is an asset. It has a return on investment for me when I utilize it. And I know that I got to come to the table being the best student that I can be. And if I do that, they're going to be the best coach that they can be for me. So I create that that win win situation, in that sense. But Sean, how can people uh, how can people get get in touch with you to get your your cool check this out your cool mentoring program that you got going on here with your awesome flyer that's all branded out? How can they uh, how can they reach you? Yeah, they can check out connectionmachine.biz is my website. You can also call me anytime, really, except on Christmas you know day. But two zero one. 320-3454. Uh, 
My email is Sean, S-H-A-W-N, Z -like like zebra, I-E-M like Mary, at gmail.com. You can check me out on Facebook. You can check me out on Instagram as Connection Machine. Also, I have a YouTube channel, Connection Machine, uh, Web Talk, what have you, uh, and LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn as well. I like to use and abuse Facebook. It's been great to me. I like to market as much as possible, so you'll see me with videos, with others, interviews, et cetera, because I know the value is so important today. Um, and I'm always, I always tell people, I'm like, listen, if you're making cold calls, stop making cold calls. Start making connection calls because you're going to go into those calls and you're not going to have to worry about being a bad call, a negative call, or it didn't go anywhere. Every call will go somewhere because you're going to go into it, not selling somebody on that call. You're going to be a resource. So you're going to listen to the pain points that someone might be sharing in that conversation. If you can help them with those pain points, that's where now you're providing value. And that call is not a, a cold call anymore. It's a connection call because you're going deeper with those individuals. So that's something I want to make sure people understand. Hmm. Do your cold call. I cold call all the time. I call them connection calls. But I also prove to others because I share after those calls. I do a post. I just had an awesome call with Fred. Have you guys connected with him yet? What does that do? I put him in lights. People see, and my friends are like, who's this Fred guy? And I'm giving, feeling grateful for him as well. And I want him to get more connections. So uh, my, I, I kind of um, taught my community that if I put you on blast, put you in the lights, that you should reach out to them. You should connect them with them as well because I found value. You should reach out and get that value as well. So it's so important to utilize that and utilize your, your network because your network is your net worth. They always say that, right? Absolutely. I love it, man. Dude, this has been super cool, man. You got you got your your cool gifts going on. I hope you have a, a wonderful Christmas, Sean. Thank have you a, so much, Fred, for this opportunity. This is so much fun, man. This is I hope more people do this, but there's not a lot of action takers. So I appreciate you jumping on board using this kind of platform for your services. And I know those that are in my community should reach out to Fred. Join this um, giveaway as well because it's something that if you don't have a website, you don't have any branding, it's something to check out because he is the real deal. And he's an author as well. He has three books, right? You wrote three books. Yeah, so I got two right now, and the third one's coming out this spring, which is going to be super, super, super cool. Make money and have fun. The book. It's freaking awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, man, it's going to be cool stuff. We're going to meet in person one day too, Sean. Yes, we are. I'm planning that into the universe right now to let everybody know what's happening. Dude, this has been awesome. And by the way, if you guys are going to check out Sean's show, you should check out the interview that he did with that guy named Fred Pasimo. It's by far his best show that he ever did. And it's it was only a couple days ago. I just I just shared it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I saw that. That was so funny. I'm like, that that was such a cool show. <laughs> I, I love hanging out with you, man. No, it's, it's a blast. blast. It's I'll a blast. have you back on like another six months or so. <laughs> yes, that'll be. I'm down, honored. I'll have you on mine as well. I hope you have an awesome and merry Christmas to you and happy New Year. And uh, yeah, 2021 is going to be another awesome year. This is the goal. 2021 is to be better than 2020. Boom. There it is. I love it. On that note, see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Have a good one.